Okay, so yes, it is very clear. So I'm the middle ground person here. So I'm the person, I'm gonna tell you two nice little stories. The first one, very kitsch little story. So I uh, grew up in a fabulous home, made fabulous attachment with both my mother and father, perfectly natural, normal. And even today when I think about doing something hard and I want, to be, want someone to be proud of me, I think of my dad, I don't think of David who is my dad. He's also here today, so I'm very, very lucky. So very kitsch. Um, grew up, was told at the age of eight. Um, then when I got to the age of 18, we decided, yeah, let's, let's go see if we can find out who this guy was. And funnily enough, David was also looking too. A few months later, we met. Wow, amazing. Few, we realised we lived mm, a K and a half from each other. Amazing. We kept bumping into each other. I met his children. And over the last 10 years, I've actually been able to create a fantastic relationship with his family and his children and it's just you know it's fabulous it's the most amazing story you could ever hear and so that's great sounds fa fantastic right there's always a but I'm going to tell you the second story which is a bit of a story of shame and this shame is and I'm sorry if I start to cry because it's still quite raw for me um, it's a story of a little girl who was told of her conception when she was eight and realised she was different. And from that time, started to be bullied at school and grew up knowing she was different. And she was ashamed to tell who she was. I wasn't, although it was very open within the family, in the immediate family, we weren't allowed to tell people. My grandma told us no. And that's a shame I've carried with me for a very long time. But that's okay, we get through these things. I met David, I still felt ashamed because although he wasn't ashamed of me, I knew his wife didn't want to meet me. I knew there were times when I went to his house and I knew that his wife didn't know I'd visited. And there were times when I'd met his children, I knew that it probably wasn't meant to happen. And I felt ashamed, I carried that shame. <laughs> but we dealt with that and things Okay, it went along as I always do, and things got a bit better. But the shame came back. And the shame next came back when it came to me getting married. And of course, I have David, I have three wonderful half siblings as well as my own brother. And of course, I wanted them to all be on the wedding table. Of course, why wouldn't they be? He's my flesh, he's, you know, I'm part of him, he's part of me. But then I get the, the questions from my mum and dad and it's not their fault, absolutely not, that they weren't told what to do in this situation because how can you know? We were basically the first ones that went through this, so how could they know? But they said, how can, how can they be on the table? People will ask questions, who are these people? They can't just rock up, They're, all our family and friends will be there. And I, that was when I finally gave up the shame that I'd been holding for so long and realised that it wasn't my shame. It was the shame of the adults around me that I had been carrying as a little girl for so long. And finally, as an adult, I was able to say, that's your problem. I'm proud of your hand, and I'm proud of how it was made. And you need to start to tell people, because it's not something to be ashamed of. Because if you're ashamed of this, then you're ashamed of me. And so that was the day I probably let go of that shame, or not let go of it, but perhaps placed it where it needed to be. And so what I say to all of you out there, all of you who either have children, or are thinking of having children, or have a bubby on the way, it's like Riley said, it's fine to tell, but make sure you sort your stuff out first. Make sure you realise the implications that you can have. And my temperament was different to my brother's, so how he's dealt with it is different. But I carried the shame. When my parents should have dealt with it beforehand, people should have helped them deal with it. People should have helped them know that it's okay to tell people you shouldn't be ashamed, no matter who you are. Because in fact, I'm so proud of my parents for having done this now as an adult. And like I said, I could not have had a better attachment with my father or my mother. But I guess, yeah, if there's one thing, people do tell everything in this research, tick boxes for me, 
everything about the attachment between father and child, a bit about the mothers being helicopter parents. It's all there. It's exactly <laughs> like reading my life story. So as soon as Sandy sat down and said, thank you so much, because I didn't realise people were actually worried about this. So please tell your children, if you need people to help, then of course we're out here, but also tell your family. Be proud of this. It's not something to be ashamed of. We do grow up and we, we do become fantastic people because we've grown up in a loving, caring family and that's all any child needs. Now working in mental health, I know that. I know that all we need is loving attachment figures. We need love, we need support, and that's all. And we need openness and honesty <coughs> above all. So thank you for listening to me tonight. And if, yeah, thank you for just being here and being interested because I think that's really important. Just it's really, really important for your kids' futures. Thank you.